Hi, I'm Eric Schmidt, and I write about music for Dirt. Formerly leader of the 90s rock band The Refreshments, Roger Klein now fronts The Peacemakers, an Arizona quartet that plays rootsy southwestern rock and roll. In this interview, Klein talks about the difference between art and entertainment, and how he enjoys the paradox of playing in an independent, non-commercial band with music that's catchy enough to appeal to anyone. Roger Klein and The Peacemakers play at the Boulder Theater, November 19th. the time to talk to us and um, oh, it's my pleasure I was enjoy looking. Boulder very very much oh yeah you, you yeah. get up here often then or uh, just, usually just when we're playing um, but every time you know, every time I enjoy it it's just it's a fresh it's a fresh clean place and you know, it seems it seems connected to nature more than many metropolis areas are yeah actually it's not even a metropolis it's almost it's somewhere between city and town so. yeah but like just outside the metropolis maybe <laughs> was going to ask you, first of all, we're, we're trying to do a uh, podcast with some of our interviews, so would you mind if I recorded this for that? No, go for it. Cool. All right. Well, um, I don't know where you would want to start. Um, I have uh, been listening to both your live album and um, Americano, and may maybe I was wondering, first of all, for people who might know you better from the refreshments, can you kind of like go through um, your album since then and how they've kind of evolved up to a point of, of these two that you have now. Well, yeah, if you don't mind the long answer. <laughs> or maybe the, the, the short version, anyway. Short version, the long answer and the short version. Yeah. Uh, the refreshments put out, Tiffany Fuzzy, Big and Buzzy, okay, on their that. career. Pardon? I, I'm sorry, I was just saying I remember that album. That was cool. Uh, uh, but go on uh, Mercury Records in 96, I believe, and then we recorded bottle of fresh horses and put it out in 98 or maybe it was late 97 in any case during the during the middle during the time that we were signed and the time that we were dropped um mercury was acquired by a large conglomerate and everybody was on quote unquote on our team from radio people to marketing to well everybody who was at the office so to speak and our presidents were all fired and we found ourselves basically without uh, a team who had a strategy for us and the company came and asked if they could have, what is it, an extension on their option, which meant they wanted another 30 days to determine whether or not to re-sign the refreshments. And during that time, they asked if they could work a single at radio, and if it succeeded, they wanted it to pick us up. Well, I, I took issue with it because it implicitly, actually explicitly in that was that we were going to be judged in a, in a solely commercial basis on how well we did at radio and album sales. And I said, okay. I don't want to write songs like that with, with that sort of agenda. I want to, I would rather be an artist than an entertainer. And so the, the refreshments was a democracy, and we had quite a debate, but ultimately decided uh, to opt not not to extend the option, and Mercury rec Records subsequently dropped us. And so um, the cracks in the armor began to show within the band, and uh, you know it was a, it was a scary time to go from being on a major label with the mm, what is it the, the big award of being a signed band because there was once upon a time that was that was a big deal. Okay. Um, to being a drop band with the with the stigma that that carried, and to being you know independent like it or not, it was before the internet was as powerful as it is now. Um, so we broke up. Actually, we uh, artistically and commercially we had our differences, and we ended up breaking up. So PH and I grabbed our acoustic. We decided we still had an alliance, and we grabbed our acoustic guitars and a couple of tape recorders. And um, the day after the refreshments last show, which was in May of 1995. I was Cinco de Mayo, actually, in 1995. We put on put on backpacks and carried water out into the desert in search, in search of hearing the muse and finding adventure and seeking visions and all those fun artistic things. And we bit off more than we could chew, thank goodness, and we came back with the seeds of Honky Tonk Union, which we began to write and perform as duo acoustics, in, as a duo, uh, an acoustic duo in 
Tempe, Arizona, at our old haunts where we developed the refreshment places like the Yucca Tap Room, Long Wongs, and even Gibson. And we basically had a rotating lineup. We wanted anybody who thought that they could creatively augment what we were doing to come and stand in with us. And that, that and then the recordings and the songs all coalesced together over the course of about two years, and we put out Honky Tonk you know, with a relatively static lineup in October of 1999 and began to hit the road. So Honky Tonk Union was sort of this first experimental, you know, I guess almost blind visionary thing. Like we, we knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't know how to do it yet. So we just sort of by default created this independent, I wouldn't say movement, but we at least moved. So we did an album, we got in the van, and we did it the way that the rock bands have been doing it for 50 years. Okay. And lo and behold, our readings and and wanderings brought about the seeds of the next album, which was Sonoran Open Madness, which we recorded independently as well, and Danny White's studio, our former bass player, and still runs the studio. Um, we created Sonoran Open Madness together, 10 songs that I consider almost a punk folk record. Um, very... Very um, directed, I believe, in its in its aim and course. Anyway, after that, we put out. Oh, I'm sorry, but between those, we, we put out another live album, which is called Real to Real, which is just a photograph, a sonic photograph of the band okay. on small stages, um, what, doing what we do when we did it and what we considered our true calling, and we and that's what we do best. So then, let's see, Honky Tonk Union, then Real to Real, then Snowing Open Madness, and then after that, another studio album called Americano, which you said you've been listening to. Yeah, yeah. And we toured that for about almost a full year before we recorded Live at Billy Bob's. All right. And Live at Billy Bob's became a, kind of a compen- kind of a comprehensive a compendium, an amalgamation of everything we had done from the refreshments through the most recent Peacemaker album. We threw it all together, about 10 years of work, and it's been out there and working with us for almost a year now. All right. And it was a lot of fun. So there's the long and short. All right, great. Yeah, sorry to make you go back through all that, but helps helps kind of put it in some context. So so you had, had sort of gotten into it, but, um, you know, the difference between being, um, you know, on a major label for the refreshments to, to now being um, independent, I mean, have you found that to be a good thing, or what, what kind of things has that opened up for you? Well, it's, it's gone. It's opened up quite a, quite a few things. It, I was asked once what's harder or easier about, about, your career now that you are independent. Right. 